great to speak with you because uh, when we spoke, it was the beginning of the pandemic. It was uh, it was kind of like a new world because not only with what was going on around us and we weren't sure what the heck was happening, to communicate was a little different too because um, people were just starting to get introduced to Zoom, but you and I did it over the phone. And I remember I had to go somewhere really quiet, so I was literally like in the shelter kind of thing, trying to talk to you. And uh, it was it was crazy. It was it was crazy thoughts, crazy times, crazy everything. Now we've all kind of do I say we adjusted? Can we? Can I say that? Like we're adapting. Yes, I mean it's not over yet, but no, we're getting better day by day. Right, I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. How have you coped with everything? Because here you are having this stellar career, creating great music, and in a lot of ways, not getting to perform it the way it should be performed. I am, first of all, if we're talking about how I'm adapting, I feel like I'm kind of nervous. I feel like I've, I haven't gotten COVID yet. I mean, I've pretty much been staying inside for the entire, since that's how I spoke. All I do is just pretty much stay inside. So now I'm nervous. I feel like everyone's getting COVID now. I'm like, when is my turn? When is my turn? So I'm getting a little bit like paranoid almost. But at the same time, I just feel like, you know, I stay inside. I do everything. If I go outside, I'm always like mask or whatever. Like I don't care. I just like always make sure. Um, so I just take the proper precautions and I just like, you know, try to stay inside as much as possible. And um, so I don't really worry too much because I'm like, okay, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So there's nothing to be nervous about, you know? Uh, but when it comes to the career side, it's kind of like, yeah, I do want to be out there. And also I want to see the people that support me, you know? I want to feel like they're real people because sometimes you just see numbers and you forget that these are genuine people that genuinely support you. And when you drop your music, you kind of get reminded that, oh my God, these are real people with the super nice messages that they sent you. So you know, that's definitely an aspect of this that is like, oh my God, I can't wait to be out there. Like, but you know, um, things are opening up little by little with the pandemic um, kind of, I would say disappearing, but not really disappearing, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and I know what you're saying too. I'm still a mask guy. You know, I, Jim, I have a mask on. Whenever I go anywhere, I have a mask on. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm a mask guy and I'm probably going to keep it going for a very, very long time. You know, the two cities in Canada... Uh, that I think had the toughest was Montreal and Toronto. Um, at its worst, how were you coping, not just um, emotionally, but also uh, when it came to trying to write music and get music out there? It's funny because I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, I mean, this is not funny, but I was like, introverts have been doing this forever. It wasn't the pandemic that made me stay inside. I was always a stay inside person. So it's weird how nothing really changed in a way because I just sit inside and write music anyway. So I was just like, okay, well, I can't go outside. So I'll just stay inside and just put my feelings onto paper, like not paper, you know, I'll just start writing or whatever. Um, and that's literally what I did. I just focused on trying to get better. I was like, what do I need to improve on? This pandemic has given us a time for pretty much everyone to kind of self-reflect and decide, okay, what is it that I want to do with my life? And the things that I want to do with my life, how can I improve at it so it feels enjoyable and doesn't really feel like a job or whatever? I don't know. I just, I wanted to just better myself. I was like, okay, start working on vocals and just go crazy and then start learning how to write better and produce better. Just, I don't know, just like really try to have my craft not be so random and have me be a little bit more in control of everything. And so that's what I focused on. I feel like... Yeah, that's what I did pretty much. I just focused on myself and yeah. You said the the correct thing about self-discovery. A lot of people were doing during the pandemic, but your self-discovery has been going on for an extremely long time and you've shared this in your music. Can you talk about how you know that self-discovery over the years um, has of course impacted your life, but then as the pandemic hit, how it took it to another level? I feel like the sole reason I started to make music was because I wanted to figure out who Teddy was, not who other people wanted Teddy to be, but who I was as a person. I feel like I was always lacking that. And I was so envious of people who really had a strong sense of identity. And I was like, 
I feel like I've literally my life for everyone else, but you know, was reaching a point where I'm just like, I need to start figuring out who I am, or I'm just gonna live my life and be regretful. And I hated that more than anything. So um, I just started to just focus on that more during the pandemic and just say, let's dive into that even more and not hide from anything. I feel like um, writing about things that scared me was something I leaned on more during the pandemic. I was like, okay, am I terrified of writing this song right now? If I am good, write it. Like really lean into that vulnerability. And I feel like that's what's going to make people connect with me. And so that's what I did. Yeah. When the pandemic hit, what was the thing that hit you the most in going, you know what? This is the one thing now I definitely want to talk about through my music. I feel like during the pandemic, I feel like a lot of, for a lot of people, it's like that. But especially for me, I feel like it made me realize that I was too reliant on other people. Codependent is the word. I, friendships, whatever, I was just like, if anyone was like, I don't know, nice or anything, I'll just kind of like be almost like attached right away, right? And I had to learn to adapt. I had to learn to let go of that and say, hey, the world is scary, yes, but I can stand on my own two feet and tackle that myself. I can be strong enough to be my own support and then let other people join in on something that is already there and not just like bear the thing that's keeping you together. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what this song is about. That's what this entire EP is about, honestly. It's just about going through the process of trying to figure yourself out and understanding that it's okay if things aren't perfect. You can still go after things and you can still do things. You can let go of the shackles that you have, whether it's a job, whether it's a person, whether it's like a negative feeling or whatever, you can try to move past that, even if it's scary. No, let's jump right into it. And I always like to make this part official. You have a new single. What is the new single called? And even though we explained it, I'm going to ask again, what is that single about? How does it represent you today? Um, my new single is called I Wanted My Heart to Break. Um, and the way it represents me is just how I was saying it's just, I wanted to be strong enough to do things for myself. I thought, I almost felt guilty that I felt like I was becoming strong enough to be able to do things by myself and not rely so much on other people and let go of, of some certain negativities. And that's what the song's about. Because sometimes when you move forward, you're kind of like, oh my God, what was I scared of all along? And did I even need to ever rely on these people? Now I kind of feel guilty. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, I thought I would miss you more. I thought I would be more hurt. I thought I would be more whatever, but it was like, I'm strong enough to do this and I can do this. And now I'm kind of sad that like, damn, I kind of wasted so much time or was there even any need to even like, why can't I figure this out earlier or something? You know, that kind of like guilt that's just in the back of your head. But I have to be like, okay, I have to let go of that too. So yeah. When you use the word let go, does that mean also that you had to let go of people in realizing, okay, it's not just not relying on people, but then realizing maybe sometimes, why is this person in my life? Yes. And not let go. I mean, that, but at the same time, it's like, also, it's like, even if it's not on bad terms, it's like, you are allowed to step away from a person. You don't have yeah. to be, oh, I'm never talking to you again for the rest of my life. I mean, if it's a situation like that, sometimes when you reassess yourself, it's like, this person's toxic. I don't know why I was tolerating that for the longest. And you kind of have to dip. But sometimes it's also just kind of like, okay, we've grown as people. Maybe you're not, it's not a situation where I don't ever want to speak to you again, but it's okay if we speak like once every six months. Like, I'm not going to feel the need to talk to you every day. Like, I can do things on my own. Yeah. Have people, how have people reacted to this song? Because I'll tell you something, I love the statements that you've made, but this song could go even further than that for a lot of folks. Yeah, I was making certain when I write, I mean, I literally like, I'm so obsessive over <laughs> lyrics. It's not even funny. I feel like I hope people can tell that. Like I will sit there for a week over a line. I'm not exaggerating. I've sat there for like two weeks over writing like a line. And it's like, I love the fact that people are relating to it on so many different levels. And that's exactly how I wrote it because I didn't want, I write my songs like they're love songs, but they're not. They're very much in, uh, a gateway into my brain 
my overthinking brain. Um, and I want it to be about everything, literally everything, any negative thought, any anything that shackles you down, any anything that's, I don't know, whatever um, you can step away from that and be your own thing and thrive and be great or whatever. I want it, I want it to feel empowering and not sad. And I feel like um, it's definitely doing that with the messages I've been receiving and it, it's making me really happy. Yeah. You mentioned the word EP. What's going on with this? Um, I'm so excited about this one because it's like, I feel like it's my most vulnerable one, which gets me so hyped. Even though it gets me, I'm terrified, but it gets me so hyped. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also my most diverse and most, I want to say complex, but simple one too at the same time, right? I feel like I, I, I was telling you how I really took my time to try to get better at what I do and I feel like people are going to be able to tell that I took my time to be good. There was no excuses anymore. It's like, okay, two years of just like, so whatever I drop next better be good. You know what I mean? So um, I took my time. I made sure everything was perfect and I'm super excited for it to come out. It's called Manic Party, by the way. Is the EP out now or is it coming out? I wasn't sure. No, um, I don't have a date yet. Or rather, I don't know if I should say, but it's it, yes, it you can. Don't don't year. don't worry if don't don't worry if your record company's listening. Go right ahead. Um, I don't know about that, but um, I know it's coming later this year, and it's called Magic Party, and I'm super excited for everyone to hear it. Okay, we're looking forward to this, man. Um, it's coming out. I just got a message. It's supposed to be coming out this fall. Yes. So there you go. We 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 can I make think. that announcement. Yep. No. No. I just got a message on chat saying yep, and oh, okay. uh, and I also got an LOL on that one. So yeah, it's coming out this fall. So we're looking forward to that. Um, concert wise, what's going on with performances? Is it gonna still? Is it gonna be on Zoom or on social media? Or are we gonna get you L I V E live? Oh my God, that's the goal. That's everything I'm looking forward to. Um, I know in May I have rehearsals and then hopefully from June, I just start doing shows and doing different things. That's my favorite, if everything goes according to plan and COVID decides to be nice. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm, looking, be nice. <laughs> I'm just like, please be nice to me. Let's go, let's go. I like, I need to see people. I need to see stuff. I'm like, be nice to me, let's go. Um, so. I've got this picture of COVID walking up with candy and flowers <laughs> and open up the door. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, COVID, nice. <laughs> oh my goodness, my friend, I love your attitude. I love the way you do things, but there's one thing I am disappointed about. What is it? What the hell happened to the blonde hair? Oh my God. Um, I don't even, I just, I keep switching. I've changed my hair so many times in this pandemic. You have no idea. Right now I'm like, um, it looks normal, yeah. but I had long hair and I had like dreads that were blonde dreads. I had a bunch of different things and I kept changing over and over and over. And I feel like I was definitely over dyeing it. So I'm giving it a break for mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. because I'm like, okay, like I don't want to go bold. Like what is going on here? Um, so I'm giving it a break for a little bit and I'm going to go crazy again. What color is it going to be? I don't know, but um, definitely still want to keep playing around with the blonde for sure. I feel like that's... Uh, yeah. Oh. I like the blonde on you, brother. It looks good on you. Thank you. I love that. Look, before we go, um, one quick question. And again, you know, I don't want to get too much in religion or anything like that. But have you ever thought about doing, listen to me. Uh, have you ever thought about doing a gospel album? Because you have such an amazing voice. Um, you know, gospel or jazz or something like that. Because... Um, you're stellar at what you do now, but I would love to hear you do a genre or genres like that also, because like I said, your voice is stunning. You want to know something funny? I think for me, by default, I don't go into bodies of work thinking I'm going to do a specific genre. I think it's more of like the music will always come out of me the way it wants to come out. It almost feels like I have no control. Um, it's like I'm going through life and I will connect with certain instruments or a certain sound and I'm like this is the feeling or this is the thing that's going to get this feeling out of me in this mm -hmm. moment right um but lately I've been listening to um what's that song but it, like um I was like uh last night you were dreaming that I heard you say 
I don't, I don't even know the name of the song, but I was like, damn. Oh my God, like I need to do some shit like that. Like, I, and then I was like, okay. And I was looking into that kind of style and being like, I think I could sound really dope yeah. on something like that. And I've genuinely been thinking about that lately. So we'll see what's going to come out of that. I'm excited. I, I, I can even see you doing like a, a ret- retrospect of, of Luther songs too, or, or whatever. Like you have the voice and you have the talent. Yeah. Teddy, look, I got to say, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for for everything that you have done because you really are a role model in showing whatever fears that you have, you can always conquer them and be successful. Uh, looking forward to when the EP comes out in the fall and uh, crossing fingers when you do get out there and start touring, Toronto will be one of your destinations. Really hoping for I, that. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. Thank you so much for having me. This was genuinely so fun.